since we threw down over a G on a new ESC, I figured maybe it was time to update the controller. And uh, towards that end, there's been one of my viewers, uh, Michael, over at Making Stuff Awesome, who is awesome himself, stepped up to the plate. He was uh, uh, messaging me back and forth, and he suggested, why don't you use an Arduino to control the thing? And I'm like, well, I didn't want another computer in there, and then there's, you know, all kinds of, it's just, just hemming and hawing. But the truth of the matter is, I am familiar with Arduinos and Raspberry Pis, uh, but I'm not the greatest at writing the code or the sketches for them. So Michael stepped up and he offered to do it. So he did. And uh, this is what he sent over. But before we get to that, let's explain how all this works. So this, of course, is the electric turbo that started it all. This, of course, was going to be the crankcase evacuation pump and still is going to be the crankcase evacuation pump. At some point, I'm actually going to bead blast this thing and it's going to look halfway decent. But for the time being, this is our demonstrator. So here's a regular ESC. Here's a battery pack that, by the way, has a faulty cell in it, so there might be fire involved. I hope not, and I doubt it, but it's possible. So, but it's got a dead cell. So basically this is effectively a 3S pack. That one cell just doesn't even show up and it, you know, tanks pretty quickly, but that's fine because we're not showing this thing off. We're just using that as, a, as an example. So let's connect, well, first thing we would do. So these are, this is what we're using to control the electric turbo right now. We're using two of these. We're using one set all the way down and then through a relay we just switch to a second one that is set all the way up and that's really it. And the way these work there's a 50 hertz frequency and there's a pulse at the beginning of that 50 hertz and at zero percent throttle that pulse is one millisecond long. You're going to see this later on in the oscilloscope. In fact this one right here. And at full throttle that pulse is two milliseconds long. So, you know, that, that frequency of 50 hertz, you can fit a lot of those pulses in there. So it's just right at the beginning of, of each one of those 50 hertz cycles. So anyway, so that's what we've been doing now. It was simple, it was easy, it works, you know, cheap and cheerful and all that. Not very elegant and certainly doesn't do a whole lot for inrush current into the ESCs. And of course, we've had fire, we've had smoke. You know, I've seen fire, I've seen rain, I've seen, yeah, whatever. Uh, so anyway, so we're not gonna do this anymore. We're stepping, we're stepping it up a notch. So that's gone now. So now let's look at this thing. Well, actually, huh, before that's gone, let me show you how this actually works. So let's connect this. So the signal path is up top. This You can connect up to three servos or three ESCs to this deal. So we'll just connect it to the top one. So it's ground, five volts from the ESC, and the white wire is signal. So let's plug this in and you will hear it make some noise. All right, so that means it's armed, it's ready to go, and it sees a signal. So I'm just gonna hold this, and as we sneak up on the knob, and we go full bore, <laughs> and then you can hear that cell die. But again, you get the idea. So off, on. So there you go. So simple, fun, and a relay switching between two of these, one set all the way down and one set all the way up. Works, whatever, great, fine, but not real slick. And also, like I said, there's a tremendous amount of inrush current when you go full tilt. These ESCs do have a certain amount of programmability in how quickly they ramp up, but it would be nice to be able to dictate that amount perfectly. Towards that end, what Michael over at Making Stuff Awesome has done is written up a sketch for an Arduino, uh, Nano Works. I know an Uno works because that's what I tried it with at first. That's what I happen to have. By the way, in case you don't know that, let me go rooting around in here like a pig looking for truffles. Let's see. So this is an Uno. It's, it's like the basic Arduino deal. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's small, but you know, it's not quite as small as, let me get this guy out of here, I'll disconnect this thing. It's not quite as small as a Nano. Hey buddy, it's you, come here, come here. By the way, I'm now also an Amazon affiliate, so I'm gonna put a link to where you can buy these things on Amazon. A three pack is like 12 bucks or something. Uh, take a look down below. Uh, it throws a couple bucks at the channel and helps me pay for all of this stuff, including this. Now let's get back to the video. And thanks for buying these things. 
And these two are functionally the same. There's some differences in terms of uh, I.O. capability. But obviously the biggest difference is, well, this one's a lot smaller, a lot easier to package, and it runs off 5 volts. Now you actually upload the sketch or the program through the USB port. The other thing you can do through the USB port is power it. So we have over here a boost converter that takes a single LiPo cell and amps it up to 5 volts. So it takes, uh, you know, 3.7 nominal, so it's anywhere from 3.2 to 4.2 volts, and bumps it up to 5 volts. We just use a USB adapter, and this is actually the mounting schema as well. I always wanted to use the word schema in a sentence, and now I have. So anyway, so, so there we go. This, this is the whole thing. So we don't need the Uno anymore. Let me go back to the pig rooting through truffles thing. So there you have it. So this is the entire new control rig. Much more elegant than what we had before. Uh, we can program this thing. In fact, let's go look at the sketch right now. Here we are at the computer and you're going to hear me crack open a brand new Nano. And by the way, affiliate link below if you want to buy some of these guys. Please do so. You're going to pay the same price you would otherwise, except you get to help me pay for stuff. So anyway, here's a brand new Nano. You can hear the crumbly, crunchy bag. We're going to open it up. I'm not going to bring out a camera just to show you this. Use your imagination. Use your creativity. And then we're just going to plug in a USB cable into this thing and plug this into the computer. And it lights up. <laughs> this is the first time I'm using this one, so we're about to find out if she's any good. All right, so that's plugged in. So let's fire up the sketch that uh, Michael sent us. It goes right into this. Now there are going to be a few notes that are really important. So before you do anything, you want to go into tools. You need to select the board. It's an Arduino Nano, and you need to uh, select which processor is in there. There's a old bootloader and a current bootloader. These Nano boards use the old bootloader. Doesn't make a difference in performance or anything. You just have to make sure you have the right one selected. So there it is, that's all you have to do. And here's the sketch itself. So a sketch is a program, or this is the code itself. Um, we can go through a few sort of relevant points here. Uh, the first of which, and the one you all want to know, is, and there he is, author, ultrasonic2-pc slash Michael. But here it is. This delay time 2000 is the time to slowly increase the ESC from 0 to 100%. That's 100% throttle, 0 to 100% throttle. So that is in milliseconds. That's 2000 milliseconds. That is two seconds. We can change that to anything and save it. But two seconds is a great start point, so I don't see a point in changing it. But if we wanted to, all you would do would be, let's get rid of that. All you would do would be to just change that number, you know, boom, three seconds or one second or two seconds. So let's leave it there. Now there's another note that I actually had to ask him about because I really didn't understand. Um, but it's this one, this delay of 8,000. So normally needed cause, as he says, because most DSCs when booted need a certain length of time to auto set the minimum speed. So in other words, what that means is uh, what he's trying to say is that most DSCs, when they first receive power, you can't just slam them to wide open throttle like right away. It takes them a few seconds to get everything you know, get all the tubes warmed up and, uh, you know, the, the, the birds pecking on the, the stone tablets all happy and everything. Anyway, so that's all we got to do. So now we're done. All we have to do now is literally, well, you can verify the sketch, but there's no need to because it's, it's a good sketch. All we got to do is upload it. Click upload. It's uploading. It's compiling it first. An error occurred. We didn't select our serial port, you dope. Comp 10, let's try it again. All right, let's go ahead and just upload this puppy. It's done uploading, that worked. So, you know, genius me actually forgot to uh, select the COM port, which is the same thing you have to do with the ESC too. So don't forget to select the COM port. Anyway, let's go back to the other desk. So that's really just that simple and we can adjust that ramp up time. So how does it work? How well does it work? Does it, does it work? <laughs> that's, a, that's a very good question, people. Very good question. All right, so let's hook it up. So right now I'm actually waiting on the JST connectors for the little LiPo pack. Speaking of which, let me show you. So I ordered actually a whole bunch of these guys. 
So Michaels did suggest that I just run it off the car power, and that is an idea, and that would certainly work. Somehow it kind of bothers me. I want to keep the two electrical systems completely isolated as much as possible. In particular, they're going to have to share a common ground if I do tie them in together. And if the power leads, which are of course massive and exposed to a tremendous amount of current, uh, should short out, there's a spot where I know that that is a possibility it could actually happen, uh, then we could have bad things happening all around, and I don't want that. And besides which, these little batteries, which are for some little random quadcopter thing, they're 14 bucks for, what is this, five of these things? plus the charger. Uh, these are single cell, 1S basically, uh, 600 milliamp hours. So effectively they will run this thing for 15 to 20 hours per battery between charges. More than enough, super compact, super small. It's just gonna go in the box, little pouch pocket, go right through the switch and into this. So since I don't have the connectors for these yet, I'm going to use my bench power supply. So let me put these over here in a pile with all these other wires and there'll probably be fire over there later. Uh, let me bring in my bench power supply leads and clip it up. So you just observe the polarity. That one's... Damn my shaky hands. So that's uh, positive. And that's negative. Okay. So let me power up the bench power supply. Now I know this thing only draws like 30 milliamps. It's pretty awesome. Set to 3.5 volts right now, which represents a fairly middle of the road, kind of bottom 50% discharged uh, cell, but not fully discharged. Let's kick the power supply on. There you have it. Everything's booted up. Uh, you know, one, this is generating five volts, powers this thing up. Now, as far as how this thing functions, we can actually see it work. So let's go ahead and set that up right now. Let's, let's just take a look-see on the little baby oscilloscope that's here, which by the way, I use this thing actually quite a bit. So these, this connector here, these, these two you would just literally short together. In fact, you know what guys, let me zoom this in for y'all. All right, so, so these connectors, you would literally just short them together and that represents, you know, throwing the switch basically. And one of these, in fact, the red one, because I have it hooked up backwards, is a ground, and we need a ground for a signal. So this is our signal out. This is the signal for the ESC. This is our ground. Okay. Let's power up our handy-dandy little oscilloscope here. And you will see... Let's see if I put everything in frame for everyone here. All right. There. That's at a jaunty angle. So that is a one millisecond pulse. Now, if I short these two together, you're going to see that grow over the span of two seconds because that's what we have set up right now in the sketch. You'll see that grow to two milliseconds. Let me just touch them together. It's just that simple and it stays there until we let it go. So again, idle. It's, it's you know, ESC is powered up. It sees that there's a receiver connected to it. So it's not going to shut down or go into some sort of safety mode, but it's not activating the, the electric turbo and we hit the button and over two seconds, boom. Just that simple. Now that's wonderful, you say, Alex, that's fantastic. That's super cool and awesome, but does it really work? Let's widen out our shot again. And let's test that theory and see if it does indeed work. Okay, so we have our connections, once again, ground, five volts, signal. Now we don't need the five volts coming from the ESC. In fact, the bigger ESCs do not have a five volt feed because of electrical noise issues. So we're not even using that. So all we have here is two connections. The brown shall be ground and the red shall be signal because I like to confuse y'all. So there you go, red and brown. So once again, let's find us a ground, and there's another little guy right here. If I can just barely see it with my... There we go. So now that's connected to ground, so ground to ground. So these two are electrically common at this point. And then we need our signal. So here's our signal. It's probably easier if I pull this back to give myself just enough room to clip it on. All right, so the whole system now is, is generating our one millisecond signal. So if we were to plug in our ESC, it should arm and think that there's a uh, receiver connected to it or a servo tester or whatever. All right, Michael, are you ready? This is, this is you on the spot, Hoss. 
Let's check it out. Let's see. Let's see what you've done. Ah, just like the servo tester. Now, if we short these two together, this should accelerate. Let's see if I can, what's the best way of doing this? I don't know. Yeah, let's go for broke. No, I'm gonna hold it, I'm not that stupid. <laughs> and lo and behold, it works. So, oh, Michael, I'm making stuff awesome. You are awesome. This works, this is fantastic. This is going in. It's tunable, it's adjustable, it's smaller, it's slicker, it's more advanced, and that is how we're going to blow things up in the future, I guess. Yeehaw! Oh, you poor battery. I think we better stop before we start a fire. <laughs> Subscribe! <laughs>